Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the shop. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a Brown and Sharp gear tooth caliper, vernier type, to measure the thickness of a gear tooth. Now, that's a spur gear. We can't do any other kinds of, of gears here. So, the simplest gear is a spur gear. That's probably what you're going to run into. And I'll do two different ones. I'll explain the instrument and I'm going to explain only the very uh, smallest amount of gear terminology and, and uh, so on. We're going to avoid the math. We're going to uh, get the figures off of a table in Machinery's Handbook rather than calculate it. That'll make it easier for you and easier for me. And it's all about doing it quickly and easily, isn't it? So no sense in reinventing the wheel. Hope you enjoy this, even if you never need to do it. Let's get started. Out of the clear blue sky, I received a package from Mr. Patrick Fisher, who lives in Michigan, and he worked for 42 years for this company here, National Brooch and Machine Division of Lear Sigler. So he sent me this book, and I'll be using this. There's a lot of technical information in here about gears. This is from 1972. So I'll be showing some of the pictures out of this book throughout the video. Thank you Patrick. And then also what he really sent me was this brown and sharp vernier, it's got two verniers on it, gear tooth caliper. And the purpose of the caliper such as this, and Sterrett makes one also, is to measure the thickness of the teeth on a gear to see if they've been properly made. So, let me talk a little bit about this first. Here is a picture out of the 1941 Brown and Sharp catalog of a man using this caliper and uh, that's exactly what it does. Measures the thickness of the tooth. Again, the 1941 Brown and Sharp catalog shows the calipers and look at the prices on this. There'll be stills at the end so you can read the text. But in 1941 with the case it cost $45 and that was a lot of money then. Let me show you with the inflation calculator what it would cost now. So if it cost $45 in 1941 adjusted for inflation it would be $785 today. Sterrett still makes one of these, both in metric and in English, and they are quite pricey. This is a very recent catalog. $1,633 will buy you one. This is a picture out of the 25th edition of Machinery's Handbook, and they tell you how to use the instrument. I did spend a couple of hours cleaning up this instrument and it looks quite a bit better than when I first got it. It was stained and, and dirty, and uh, but it looks better now. It is in good condition. It is missing one of the screws and that's the only thing that I could find wrong with it. Now I'm going to show about a 5 or 10 minute clip of that minor restoration, but that will be shown without sound at the end of this video. So in this video, or series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use this and to check the thickness of a gear tooth, and I'll do that on two different gears, but just a little bit of preparation before we start, and one is that you really need to learn how to read a vernier scale, and there are two scales to make it even more complicated on the caliper. And to make it even more complicated, there are different kinds of scales on different calipers. This is a 20 division vernier scale. Some calipers, and I'm not sure what the steroid has without looking at it again, might have a 25. So there's just a little difference in how you read that. And if you do not already know how to read a vernier, I know this is, this could be tough, and but just enjoy this for uh, entertainment value if you don't actually want to ever do this. And why would you ever want to do this? Because, in fact, when you cut a gear, you got a, a tooth cutter, a gear cutter, and if you're 
blank is truly the correct diameter. That's very important. And you cut the gear to the correct depth. It should be correct unless there's something wrong with your machinery. But in a big factory where they're going to make thousands of gears and so on, they need to check that, make the machinery, uh, make sure the machinery is set up. And they can also use this to measure the size of the uh, gear cutter, I believe. So it has a, a definite purpose. Often this would be used mainly, uh, I think, in the inspection lab. Maybe not so much out on the shop floor. I'm not totally sure of that. Put it in the comments if you have used one of these. There are all kinds of books that you can use as reference. Some of them pretty complicated. You can also find out a lot of information on the internet. There are pages and pages in the machinery handbook that uh, covering that probably more than you even want to know. And I have several books besides this, but let's start with just a few definitions and, uh, and some terminology here before we actually start taking any measurements. Looking at machinery's handbook, you will see that we have to do the measurement a certain distance down on the gear tooth because the measurement needs to be taken at the pitch circle. Okay, you need to know these terms and probably can get away with, with just this, but this is a great picture here showing the pitch circle I just mentioned that. The addendum, and look where the little arrow goes here, I hope you can see that, but that is the distance from this dot up to the top. And then the dedendum is the distance between the pitch circle and the bottom of the tooth. Again, there's the thickness of the tooth, and that's what we are measuring. Circular pitch is the distance from the center of one tooth to the next. And then a working depth and hole depth are terms that you need to know. Hole depth is the depth from uh, the outside diameter to the bottom of the tooth. Working depth is the amount of mesh that the two teeth have. This is a rack, you know, which is a straight gear. A rack has a flat on the top of the tooth. All other circular gears are slightly crowned. Let's go back to that other picture. It may not show up too well here, but the top is a little bit round. And because of that, rather than just using the addendum, we have to use the corrected addendum. You'll see what that is in a minute. And that can be calculated with various formulas and I would say you want to stay away from that because in machinery handbooks there are <laughs> available that information in a, a tabular form. So you don't have to calculate it. You can just take it right out of a chart. In other words, there's a chart for that. The first thing you need to do on the gear that you're going to measure is determine what the diametral pitch is. Now you may already know that if you have cut the gear, you, you will know that, that this is a 12 pitch, 12 dimensional pitch gear. That's a homemade one that I showed you in a video at one time. So these are the two gears that we're going to measure and this is a 16 dimensional pitch. How do I know? I used this gauge, and that's from Bruce Witham. Whom I, who I have met, and he's a real neat guy. And there are various other kinds of gauges too, but you just match up the teeth, and you can see that that's a 16. Well, this one doesn't fit. So it's something between a 16 and a 32. How in the heck are you going to figure that out? Well, there are several ways. One is to use uh, a set of Sterrett or Brown and Sharp gauges, and I think Boston Gear has them, probably a lot of other companies. But here's another way. This little information sheet came from the good guys over at Lost Creek Machinery in Ottawa, Illinois. Many of you have been there or know these guys. They have a nice website. That's lostcreekmachinery.com. Look it up. 
but they would often have people say, uh, I need a gear, but I don't know what size. So they would send this out. And in order to determine the diametral pitch of a gear, it says, let me read it here. And you might want to print this out. If you are not sure of the diametral pitch, use the simple procedure to determine that. Take one of your gears, count the teeth, add two, divide by the sum of the diameter. So if I take my 16 tooth and I add two for 18, I divide 18 by the diameter, so you have to measure that with a micrometer, do the math, and uh, carry it out to the nearest whole number, and in that case, it's a 14 pitch gear. Simple enough. This may come in very handy for you someday. Let me show you that pitch circle again using a divider and I've got a plug here with a center hole. Now this won't be very accurate but it basically it's again that imaginary line going uh, through the tooth midway. And I've... Can you see that? I did it in pencil here. So why can't I just measure it with my caliper, you're thinking, and guesstimate. The, the thing is, you won't get exactly on the pitch circle. You, you would be close if you worked, you know, for instance, I'm about 140 thousandths, but how do I know I'm not too deep, and then it would be 151, or too high, and I'm only 128. So that would be so much a matter of judgment. But when we are using the caliper, the first thing that we have to do is to set this blade here, also called the tongue, for the, uh, the depth. Now let's look that up in a chart and see what it should be for one of these other gears that I've got laying here. We're back to Machinery's Handbook, and again, this is for spur, spur gears only. We're not talking about any other kind of gear other than the simplest gear, which is a spur gear, which is the only kind that you can cut in your shop probably anyway. But looking at the picture here, we're looking for the tooth thickness, that's T, and the cordal thickness, you can see there, that is the tooth thickness, but they're calling it the chordal thickness, and that's fine. And then the other thing uh, that we need there is the depth, and that's H, the chordal addendum for full gear tooth. And now we'll look down into the chart and find that, but you can see that we'll have the di diametral pitch we'll find over to the left, and the number of teeth here in the middle. So I'll drop down to the correct portion. Is that clear as mud? Okay, I've got a place mark here. 16 diametral pitch. And over in this column, right here, is 24 tooth. And this is the gear we're talking about. So there are two things we need to get out of that chart. Number one is the tooth thickness, it's 98 thousandths. So I'll write that down, and then the corrected addendum is 63, call it 64 thousandths, round it off. Well, now we're finally down to measuring. It took all of that time just to explain that, but it was necessary. So the first thing I'm going to do here, well, I'm going to loosen up both of those and just show you that this tongue here is the depth stop, see? So I'm going to adjust that to whatever I said here, uh, 64 thousandths, by tightening this screw and then using this little thumb nut, I will pre-adjust it before I even get anywhere near the gear. I'm going to pre-adjust that for 64 thousandths corrected addendum, that, and that isn't very much. See how it's moving? Now I have to stop and do this off camera because I have to use high power light and a high power <laughs> magnifier to see this, and so will you, even if you're a young man. It's just very, very small. So I'm going to set the vernier for that uh, dimension, and I'm, but I'm not going to show you how to read a vernier. I just have to assume that you are able to do that. 
I bought this at Sears in 1966 with a little magnet on it. It's, and I bought it for the purpose of verniers back then. And it's just great because it can be held on there with, with a magnet. And then you get, you get your eye close and you can read it. And I've got it set at 64. Maybe I can do a close-up on it, but I don't think it'll do any good. All right, that's preset and we're ready to measure. Okay, with this locked, and again, there is no lock here, I'll put it on a tooth. And you want to get it on there square, don't get it cocked. In other words, perpendicular. And we're coming down on that stop or that tongue or that blade. And then I'm going to adjust this until I have a fit. Okay, but I'm right on 98 thousandths. 98 thousandths was my target. That's what it's supposed to be. And I don't, do not know if you can read that. And even though this caliper has been cleaned up, there is light corrosion on it that I could not get off. If I can get the light just right, can you see that we are at 98 thousandths? So... This is a good gear. It's not worn and it was cut properly. Possibly it's never been used. I'm not sure. It was just among my spares. Now let's do another. Eureka! While doing this I just made another discovery and I'm using this little magnifier. I don't think I ever have used it. You know it came in this little plastic box. I just got it out today. Even though it's old I'm moving it around and the base is kind of the way in the way and I realized, duh, there's a little magnet on there and it is slightly more powerful than this. How about that? Alright, now let's measure this one and it's stamped right on there that it's 56 tooth and I'm the one that wrote down that it's 18 dimetral pitch. I don't know if you can read that up, read that at all. Let's take a look at the chart in Machinery's Handbook and see what the specs are. Okay, looking at the book very near the bottom, this is 18 dimetral pitch, and we're in this column because it's 56 teeth, so the thickness of the tooth should be 87 thousandths, and I will set the blade for 50, 56 thousandths, which again is the corrected addendum, no math needed. Okay, the tongue is set for the corrected Addendum, which is 56 thousandths. You'll have to take my word. That's on this scale. And now, put it over a tooth. You can see right now that I am not in contact. Remember, get it perpendicular. Wrong way, Corrigan. There we go, and I will read it off camera. Okay, I've read it, and it's a little bit off. Again, I was looking for 87 thousandth, and it's reading 90 thousandth. So, it's a little bit thicker, which means that apparently was cut a little bit oversized at the factory. Who knows what happened? Or could the error be mine if I go back and look at it? And I can't really tell whether this is a used gear or not. But if it was used, it would be thinner rather than thicker. Again, remember, if they cut the gear blank at the wrong diameter, that will change that dimension. Sometimes that is done on purpose, and I don't want to get into that. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a little bit about how to measure tooth thickness using a brown and sharp or sterret caliper, vernier caliper. It's not particularly easy. There's probably other videos and other information on this as well. So uh, be sure and watch the next video. Stay tuned for some extra credit. And the extra credit is where I do, again, there's no sound, uh, and it's all sped up, uh, a superficial <laughs> restoration of the Brown and Sharp, Gear Tooth, Caliper. So long for now. See you next time.